This is a keyboard. This is a keyboard. This is a keyboard. This is not a keyboard. This is a keyboard. And this is a keyboard. But why is this also a keyboard? Hey everyone, what's happening? Today I want to talk to you about keyboards. When I say the word keyboard, you probably think about this. I sold my electronic keyboard, so it's just a picture of a keyboard. Or this. Technically, the full name for this is an electronic or digital keyboard. And believe it or not, the QWERTY keyboard or computer keyboard is actually named after the instrument. But why? We'll get to that soon, but first, we got to go into the history of the keyboard. So first of all, what is a keyboard? What does that mean? Well, it's just a board made of keys. Now a key is anything you press that has a lever or sends an electrical signal. The most common form of keyboard in musical instruments is what's called the seven plus five layout. You'll see them on pianos, synths, accordions, guitars, even the foot pedals of an organ and the top of the organ, they're all the 7 plus 5 layout. Although there are other things technically referred to as keyboards, for this video we're going to focus on the instrument and the computer keyboard. The first iteration of the musical keyboard was made all the way back in 1361 and it looked a little bit different than the keyboards we know today. Back then the layout was an 8 plus 4 layout and that means there was 8 long white keys and 4 shorter black keys and this was mostly because of the way they were writing music at the time it was mostly Gregorian chant and music theory stuff but that's beyond the scope of this video so we're not going to talk about that part just know that it started out as 8 plus 4 and then eventually one of those white keys got shortened down into that small black key instead and then it became a 7 plus 5 layout now the 7 plus 5 layout means 7 longer keys and 5 shorter keys inside of an octave. An octave, by the way, is the range of musical notes before they repeat. And in music, that's just A through G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then the black notes in between are called accidentals. And there's five of those. The earliest idea of the seven plus five layout was back in 1619. This was adapted into a number of different instruments, including the harpsichord, the organ, and then eventually the pianoforte around the year 1700. It was named the pianoforte because those were the Italian musical terms for soft and loud, and the pianoforte had a much larger dynamic range than what was the hottest keyboard instrument at the time, which was the harpsichord. Eventually, the name was just shortened to piano. It went through a bunch of iterations, people adding wider and wider ranges of notes, eventually getting to what is standard now, which is the 88 keys or seven octave piano. There are a lot of variations with how large a keyboard can be, but the 88 keys is considered the standard. That's considered full range, as they say. So the piano wasn't super popular because it was expensive. It was a little bit harder to play than the harpsichord and people just didn't really understand why they would bother with it in the first place. But in the late 18th century, a man named Johann Sebastian Bach started using it. You may have heard of him. He was pretty much a rock star. And when he started using it, people finally realized the power and the dynamic range of the pianoforte. It started gaining more popularity also because there were cheaper versions that were being invented, such as the upright piano. The upright piano became a staple in a lot of people's households, especially with the rise of the middle class, people could afford them, and it was the primary way people enjoyed music in their homes. You have to remember, this was before people had ways of recording music. That was not a thing. So what people would do is they would buy sheet music and play it on the piano in their home. That was the way they enjoyed listening to music at home. Yo, you check out that new Chopin drop? Word, Chopin! Ooh. Dude, it is lit! Yo, 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 pass that sheet music right there. Pass it, yo, let me show you, let me show yo, you. Yo, 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 play that for me, play it, yo, let me find that sheet music. So that's the way things were for about a century. But with the birth of audio recording, the piano became less and less popular because you didn't need it to listen to music in the home anymore. You could just listen to recordings. But then, cue the birth of the synthesizer. Now people had already been experimenting with electronics and music for a while, but the machines were very very large, extremely expensive, and extremely complicated. If you've ever seen a picture of these things, they're massive wall-sized behemoths with wires and knobs all over the place. 
Now, synthesizers didn't start gaining popularity until Robert Moog invented the Mini Moog. This was integrated with, you guessed it, the 7 plus 5 keyboard. Now, this made it more portable, more familiar with everyone that already played on a keyboard instrument, and it also made it more affordable. I found a Wikipedia citation that said it had the price in 1974 of 1,595 US dollars which would be about $9,000 today. Now that may seem pretty expensive still, but you have to realize at the time that synthesizers could cost over 10 times that much. And now with the keyboard instrument, they are far less complicated to use as well. This was only improved further with the digital age, making keyboards even smaller and even more affordable. You can record pretty much anything directly from a keyboard into your computer and change the sound at will. It can be any instrument you want. There are full Hollywood and video game scores created using only keyboards. Now we get back to one of the initial questions I asked, why is this? called a keyboard. For that, we need to go back in time to the telegraph. If you don't know, the telegraph is a system to send electrical signals as messages. This is most commonly used for Morse code, but for a small period of time, there was a different way of sending messages, and some people referred to these as literary pianos. This was a machine that combined the telegraph technology with the keyboard of a piano. Side note, while I was in the middle of researching this video, John Green posted a video about literary pianos. I thought it was a pretty cool serendipitous moment. I will link that down below. It had enough keys so that each key represented a letter and it even had a shift key, which literally shifted the mechanism onto a different set of strings where you could use the same keys to input different things like numbers and punctuation. Then came a man called John Jonathan Pratt. He took this telegraph input idea and brought it to the next level. Good old John John is considered the grandfather of typewriters. His early prototypes used the 7 plus 5 layout that pulled on levers of a wheel and impressed them upon a page. His first prototype was also apparently built by an instrument maker. Now I couldn't find a proper source for that information, but I did see it mentioned in a couple different articles. so. I'm gonna say it's true. Now, this prototype became the inspiration for the Scholes and Glidden typewriter. So this prototype went through a bunch of redesigns and then eventually it was sold to Remington and became the QWERTY keyboard in 1873. That layout is still used today and it's still referred to as... The keyboard. If you can't tell, I'm a super fucking nerd and this is all extremely fascinating to me. I had so much fun making this video. So that's a small history of the keyboard and all its forms. And although it is clearly more efficient to have the QWERTY layout, uh, how cool would it have been if we stuck with that musical keyboard layout? All of us would just have to learn to play the piano to type. It'd be pretty cool. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it and send it to your friends. It really helps me out a lot. You can subscribe to the channel if you want more of these types of videos. Also, I love to hear from you, so let me know in the comments below. Uh, did you know that the computer keyboard was named after the instrument? Uh, do you play the piano, maybe? So thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out another video, here's one here. And if you want to check out my music, here's that here. Have a great day and enjoy yourself.